Hello everyone, Zaid from Zed Security here, and in today's video, we're gonna show you how to increase the probability of getting the correct password when cracking WPA and WPA2 networks. We all know, other than exploiting the WPS and the evil twin attack, which we covered before, the only proper way of getting the correct password for WPA and WPA2 networks is to first capture the handshake and then run a word list attack to guess the password. Therefore, the main complaint about this attack is what if the password is not in my word list? Well, in this video, we're gonna address this issue and we're gonna solve it by relying on open source intelligence. It's very simple, I know it sounds fancy, but all we're gonna do is we're gonna see the network name of our target, and then we're gonna look it up on Google and see what formula does the network manufacturer or the internet provider uses to create these default passwords. For example, I know here in Ireland, one of the providers only generates passwords that are made up of eight characters all these characters are small letters, no numbers, no symbols. Therefore, I can create a word list custom to this target if it uses this network provider and I'll be able to cover all possible passwords and go through them through a relatively short time using a powerful CPU or a powerful GPU. And if you don't have any of this, you can actually use the cloud, a powerful server on the cloud to crack the password. Let me know actually in the comments if you want me to make a video on how to use powerful cloud servers for cracking. Anyway, in this video, Matham is gonna be targeting a Netgear router and he's gonna be using the same idea. So he's gonna look up and see how Netgear cre create their default passwords. And based on that, he's gonna create a custom word list and then he's gonna run it through his GPU and you'll see how he's gonna be able to get the correct password. Now, before we get into this, please show us love by smashing that like button and subscribe and use the link in the description to enter our weekly course giveaway. We'll announce the winners on our social media. Also, please note this video is for educational purposes only, so do not run the techniques shown here against networks that you do not own or don't have permission to test. Hello everyone, it's Mathan from Z Security, and in this video, I would like to show you an interesting way that will allow you to penetrate and crack almost every Netgear router out there. Now because Netgear routers use a combination of an adjective followed by a name, followed by three random numbers, we can easily crack the password if we have the right word list. To do this, I'll be using the famous cracking tool called Hashcat, that will allow us to do the dictionary attack. The word list that I will be using will only contain an adjective plus a noun. So it will not have the last three numbers in here. Therefore, I'll be telling Hashcat to add all possible three digits combinations at the end of each word in the word list. I will also be using a GPU that is running on a Windows operating system because it will make the attack much faster and more efficient. Before we begin, let's quickly review on how the attack will be carried out. So here we have the tool that we'll be using, which is Hashcat. And we will give it two files, which are the handshake file and the word list. The word list will contain the list of passwords, which is the adjective plus the noun. Now Hashcat will take the handshake file and extract the useful information out of it. So it will separate the MIC or the message integrity check by itself. MIC is basically the data that checks if the correct password has been entered or not. The other data in here will be used with the password from the word list to generate a new MIC. Then Hashcat will take the newly generated MIC and compare it with the original MIC that has been taken from the handshake file. So if these two MICs match, then that password is correct. If they don't match, then Hashcat will move on to the next password that is in the list. So it will keep doing that until the list ends. So that's the main idea of how the attack will work. Now make sure that you have Hashcat binaries downloaded, as well as the correct GPU drivers. If you haven't done that yet, it's very simple. All you have to do is download the binaries from the Hashcat website. 
So I'm just going to search for Hashcat, go on their website, and we can see that the Hashcat binaries, version 6.1.1, and I'm gonna hit on download. And I have already saved it in here, so I'm gonna cancel it. So this is the file that we downloaded. Then you will extract it here, and you will get the Hashcat folder that contains the executable in here. Also, don't forget to download the required GPU drivers, which can also be found from the Hashcat website. So if we go back in here, if you have an AMD GPU running on Windows, you can just select that and search for it on Google. So for me, I'm running an AMD GPU, so I'm just going to select this and I'm going to search for it. Click on the first link. Look for the download link. And here we have it. So download that and install it and you should be good to go. So I have both the word list and the handshake.cap file ready in here. Now before we can move on, we have to reformat the handshake file to the hashcat format. We can easily do that by using the tool that converts it for us from the Hashcat website. So if we go back in here, we can see the converter tool in here. Click on that. And in here, choose the original Handshake file. I have it in here. I'm going to double click it. And then I'm going to click on convert. So it will automatically ask where do you want to download the converted file. I'll just download it in the Hashcat folder in here and I will rename it to Handshake to make it a bit simpler. That's it downloaded. And the last thing that I will do is I will copy the wordless file to the Hashcat folder. So I'll just drag it down just like that. And that's it. We are ready to move on with the attack. Next, I will open the command prompt from the start menu. I'm just going to enlarge in this. And in here, I'll navigate to the Hashcat folder. A quick way to do that is by copying the entire path of the Hashcat folder. We can do that by accessing the Hashcat folder. Click on here and copy this path. Come in here and do CD, which is the command to change the directories. And then I'll paste the path by doing right click on the mouse. Just like that. I'll hit enter. And we are now in the Hashcat folder. If I do dir, just to list the files inside this folder, we can see that the Handshake file is here as well as the word list. Now let's check the devices that are available for the Hashcat to use. So I'm just going to do Hashcat.exe followed by dash capital I. Hashcat.exe, which is the name of the executable file for Hashcat. And we are doing dash capital I to list all the devices that we can use. I'm going to press enter. Now, as you can see, in my case, I only have one device, which is the GPU. And here we can see its details. We can also see that the device number for this is number one right here. So I'll use that number to tell Hashcat that I want to use this GPU device. So now let's actually start writing the cracking command for Hashcat. I'll do hashcat.exe once again. Then I'll do dash D to specify the device name that I want to use, which is number one. Next, I will do dash M 2500 or 2500 to tell Hashcat that I want to use the WPA and WPA2 hash modes. After that, I will do dash W3 to tell Hashcat that I want the performance to be on high. After that, I'll do dash dash status, which will tell Hashcat to show us the actual status of the cracking process on screen. Next, I will do dash A6 to tell Hashcat that I want to use the hybrid word list and the mask attack mode. Then I'll specify my converted Hashcat file. So I'll just do hand, and then hit the tab button to autocomplete the word for me because I'm lazy. Just like that. After that, I'll put the word list that I want to use, which is the wordlist.txt. 
And finally, I'll do question mark D three times. So one, two, and three. This will tell Hashcat to add three numbers at the end of each password that is in the word list. And that's it. That's the whole command. So let's go over it one more time. The command that we'll be using is called Hashcat and we are telling it to use the device number one, which is the GPU. Then we are specifying WPA and WPA2 modes because right here we are using a handshake from a WPA2 network. Then we are doing dash W3 to put the cracking performance on high. Next we are doing status to show us the status of the cracking process. After that we are doing dash A6 to specify our attack mode. Then we are giving Hashcat the converted handshake file followed by the word list. At the end of that we are putting question mark D three times to tell Hashcat to add three numbers at the end of each password. So I'm going to hit enter. And now the cracking process has started. We can see that we have options in here. S to show us the status, P to pause the cracking process, C is to create a checkpoint, and Q to quit. Now depending on where your password is in the word list and how strong is your GPU, it can take up two days for Hashcat to find the correct password. For my case, it will be a couple of minutes because I have used a smaller word list just for the purpose of this video. So I'll just give it some time until it finds the password. And perfect. As you can see, Hashcat has cracked the password, which is this ICCAR482. And it took it around 2 minutes and 14 seconds to be finished. Now the word list that I'm using has around 24,000 lines. But with the numbers, with the number combinations, the final number of the passwords is this, which is around 20 million combinations. So even though my GPU is not the greatest, it managed to go through 20 million combinations within 2 minutes and 14 seconds, which is not bad at all. And that's just to show you an example of how faster GPUs are than the typical CPU. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to show you this interesting flaw in the password mechanism that Netgear routers have. Also, don't forget to like this video if you have learned from it and enjoyed it, and subscribe to this channel to stay updated on the latest of cybersecurity.